Okay, welcome back. Week number two, we get to hit a golf ball this week. It gets a little more challenging, gets a little more exciting, but probably the main thing we gotta realize, especially when we're learning this sport, is golf is way more skill than sport. So really important that we understand how to start controlling this club head and not get almost enamored with what the golf ball's doing. It's very easy once we begin the golf ball into play, we just almost wanna make a swing that makes the golf ball get off the ground. A lot of times that's kind of the birthplace for bad habits. If we can really still focus on how we're trying to control the orientation of this club on the way through, how we wanna hit the ground in front of the golf ball, that's gonna help us actually start to control that golf ball a lot more quickly than trying to consciously do something just to make the golf ball move the way you want it to. So be patient with this as much as possible. That's the best way to say it, is you're gonna need some patience to not go after the ball, wanna hit it hard, Everybody has these instincts at first. The more you can rein that back in, stay soft, stay smooth, you're gonna to start to develop this coordination with the club. Everything's gonna be easier from then. So I have a setup station that I'm gonna show you. Come over. So I've painted a white line on the ground that represents where the golf ball is gonna be. I have an alignment stick facing down the target line. That's gonna be my start line. And then I have two tees on the ground just outside the width of the golf club, about a finger's width outside the golf club on each side, just gives me a little gate that I can swing between. This gives me an idea if I'm hitting it towards the inside or the outside of the club. Helps me build that coordination if I'm gonna hit the ball in the center of the face, that I've gotta start working it through these tees. And you can see also, I have a vertical line painted on my club, just with a Sharpie. So I just take a Sharpie and I draw that line. I want you to start to have awareness of where the sweet spot of the club is. So this is really important that we start to build this awareness by putting something down there right now just so we have an idea where that sweet spot is. Now before we even hit a shot though, we're going to get back in and start to get control of the club, just like we did week one. First step, get the club in the right angle. Shaft's got to be crooked for the face to be square. So we need to feel like shaft's leaning forward, but the club's looking at my left hip. I feel like my feet, knees, and hips and shoulders are fairly square to this line that I'm going down. Hands are nice and soft, and I'm just gonna take these little half swings again, trying now to hit the ground in front of the white line. So I'm starting the club behind the white line over here, and now I'm trying to hit the ground in front of the white line as I go through. As I do that, I'm trying to miss those two tees, so I know the path of my club would be somewhat neutral through impact where I gotta catch the ball more or less in the center of the face. And I'm also starting to use this alignment stick to give me an idea of my start line as I swing. As the golf ball gets into play, it's gonna be important that we have an idea of which direction that we're trying to send the golf ball as we go through. So having this visual, I'm seeing the kind of this line, this projected line down that target line helps me keep that almost in perspective. My eyes are still looking here on the back of the ball where it's gonna be the ground at this point, but I know I'm swinging everything towards that target, that direction. And having almost that disassociation between your body and your eyes to be able to do that, that's almost a skill. Most new golfers tend to everything works together. Even sometimes in the backswing, as the club goes back, their eyes go back, as the club goes through, their eyes go through. Very difficult to coordinate contact with a golf ball that's only inch and quarter tall that way. The sweet spot of the club is very small. The golf ball is very small. So we almost need this almost stability out of our eyes, our thought process, what we're looking, our coordination to be able to strike the golf ball in the center of the face consistently. So really start to build this visual that my eyes are staying here, but I'm still hitting a golf ball that direction down that line. As we get more comfortable making these swings, striking the ground where I want to, how I want to, then I'm gonna do some of these reaching grabs where I kind of take it back, put my lead hand back on it, and kind of try to feel that same coordination. What angle do I start to pull this handle down that allows that sweet spot of the club to go in between those two tees and strike the ground in front? I keep working that feel over and over again. What it feels like, get it back, stop, reach and grab, pull at that angle. Start over again, take it back with one hand, reach and grab, feel the weight, pull it at that angle. Then take it to two hands, same idea. Take it to the top, pause for a second, kind of feel the weight of the club, get some awareness where that is, and then really start to train your hands what angle they're pulling this handle to allow that club head, again, the sweet spot to work in between those two tees, 
but also hit the ground, left of the golf ball, left of the line as we go through. And we just keep building that feel over and over again until we're comfortable doing that consistently. Once we get there, now we bring the ball back into play. But the rule I'm gonna have for you initially is, I wanna see three good rehearsal swings for every one golf ball you hit. I still want more rehearsals than shots at this point. Eventually, you're gonna hit a lot more shots. But right now, it's gotta be more rehearsal work, just getting awareness of this golf club. Okay, we have the golf ball back into play. Trail hand, arm only first. Go ahead and get your setup position. Make sure the shaft is crooked. Get your feet where they need to be. Feet, knees, hips, and shoulders. Pretty much parallel to that start line. And then from there, you're just gonna rehearse initially. Just kind of feel the weight of the club. And this is little shots. I'm not trying to hit these shots hard at all. I'm just controlling the orientation of the club. Again, feeling like the club starts on the back side of the golf ball, getting that feeling of the weight of the club as it goes through, and then make sure contacts on the front side of the golf ball. These little trail arm swings that really help you accentuate the feel of this one pound weight of the club, really helps us feel and start to get an idea of how to time up and use our pivot to start moving this club and start supporting the movement of the club. And then again, initially starting to build this coordination of how you put force in this handle. What direction do I apply force to the handle on the way down that allows that sweet spot of the club to hit the ground in front of the golf ball, but also between those two tees. After you've done your single arm work, we're gonna put the second hand back on, but really make sure you keep your hands soft. Tension is a talent killer in this game. Your wrist need the ability to move, to flex, to extend, to rotate. If you're tight and you have a lot of tension, you impede those movements. So it makes it very hard to really kind of coordinate the club the way you want to. So when two hands go back on, really make sure things stay light. If it's one out of 10 to scale, I tell my players I want them probably somewhere between a three and a four. I want them pretty light on the light side. And again, that's all relative to each player, obviously, but I want them to feel like, again, they have full mobility, dexterity out of their wrists and hands, that they can move this club in a lot of different directions without anything impeding it. If you get too tense, too tense or your hands are orientated on the club in a way that creates tension, that's gonna impede that. It's gonna make it a lot harder to control the weight of the club. So make sure this is soft. And I think in general, this is probably a benefit for most players starting out with the choke down on the club. So choking down on the grip so you have a little bit of the butt of the club, that puts your hands kind of closer to the balance point of the club, which keeps the head from wanting to jackknife so fast. The more I hold at the end of the club, the more this club wants to jackknife on me. So most new golfers, that's the biggest issue. If we can choke down, have a little more control over it, gives us almost a, a training aid to look at, to feel like the butt of the club is leading and getting ahead a little bit, but also just gives our hands a little more control, the golf club itself keeps it from rotating so quickly in our hands. So I think it's a big benefit as you're starting out, choke down on the club, have a little bit of the butt of the club always sticking out. Again, get your rehearsals down, get the feeling we're looking for, set up, nice easy swing, not trying to hit this very hard, That divot was in front, that was good contact. I'm gonna feel the same thing again, back up real quick. Get a feeling of that little half swing and how much angle I need to move the handle to hit the head in front. Set back up, gonna feel that same thing, nice and soft. And I'm just gonna sit here and hit these little shots until I get really good at lining these things up. I'm getting the low point of my club to hit the ground in front of the golf ball. So I'm always catching the ball cleanly. Ball first, ground second. I'm missing those two tees, so I know the sweet spot of the club, that black vertical line, is traveling pretty much equal distance between those tees going through. I'm not biased one side or the other. And I still have that secondary target where that shaft is pointing out of the corner of my eye, and I know everything I'm doing is kind of in relation to that target. I'm trying to kind of send the golf club and the golf ball down that line. But take your time. Again, be patient with this. If you start to lose control of the golf club, especially with the balls back into play, this is what I see for most players. The ball gets there, things get a little bit faster, people get a little more excited, so it gets a lot harder to control things because things just get bigger, faster, more aggressive. Slow it down, soften it up. Really make sure you go back to that half swing. 
get it out of your lead hand, get it back in your trail hand only. If you need to really kind of feel that one pound weight again and start to slow things down and sink them back up, and then go back to two hands. Keep playing that game with yourself initially to allow yourself just to build more awareness of where this weight of the club is and how our hands can pull on the handle to control it. That relationship is where we start everything. Our body motion is really important, but it's all built around how our hands connect with the golf club. So this is what we got to work on first. This is the skill part of the game that's going to allow you to get the ball in the hole, get it close to the flag when you need to, and that's what's going to allow you to score. Hitting it hard is really important, but if we hit it hard and we can't control it, it's all for nothing. So do this. This is week number two. Do your homework. I'll see you next week.